Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Very pleased to be here with you today to talk about how to improve energy efficiency of LNG fuel ships with enhanced well of gas management. My name is Abdullah Juf, Head of Process Solutions in the GTT Commercial Directorate. I would like to introduce as well my colleague, Alexander Tocatillon. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, hello and thank you for attending our webinar. So I'm uh, Alexandre Catillon, Head of uh, Business Development at GTT. My team covers uh, all GTT products and services, mainly for Europe and, and Middle East. So what we are going to see here is uh, a way to design efficient LNG fuel vessels with a proper boil of management and how GTT can help for that. Uh, of course, we also want to hear from you. So we have arranged uh, 20, 25 minutes for Q&A session and also a poll in the second part of this webinar. There will be a dedicated chat for the Q&A. So you do not hesitate to write down your questions at any time and we will answer during the second part. Um, yeah, for your information, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available uh, on demand. And um, for those of you that are just joining us, welcome. We are now moving to today's agenda. So um, we start with um, the background and uh, references of uh, GC. Following with uh, the basics of uh, LNG fuel system, then look at the, at the keys uh, for proper boil of management and finally make a focus on our uh, recycle reconnaissance system. Abdul, if you can move to the next, uh, yeah. to the next slide. Yeah, you can. Perfect, thank you. So may I repeat, so we will uh, start quickly with the background and references of uh, GTT in the LNG fuel market. We remind the basics of the LNG fuel system. We look at the keys of a proper bill of management and we make a focus on our recycled recondensate system. So uh, first, in this picture, you see the Jacques Sabe, which is the first of the nine ultra-large container vessels of CMSCGM that are operating on LNG. But before we, we start focusing on the LNG as fuel, I'd like to summarize GTT in a few words and figure. So um, GTT is basically a reference in the LNG tank business. And uh, you will be able to find our membrane technology uh, widely used on LNG carriers, on LNG fuel ships, but also on LNG terminals. So uh, we started gaining experience for the LNG as fuel uh, at small scale first. What you see here is the clean Jacksonville, um, an LNG bunkering barge, which was delivered in August 2018 and uh, which has performed more than 300 bunkering operations successfully up to now. And she's uh, on, the, on the right picture, she's uh, delivering LNG to one of the tote container vessels. And from this uh, small scale experience, together with the LNG carrier experience, we um, managed to go large scale uh, with confidence. So what you see is two different pictures, location, time, vessels are different, but it's the same success in bunkering LNG at a large scale. We are talking about, about five to 7,000 tons of LNG bunkered each time. So the two vessels, the two bunker vessels we see here, they are chartered by Total, they operate in Rotterdam and Marseille, and they deliver LNG to the very large container vessels, which calls at the port. There is actually a third membrane mercury vessel, which, has, which was just delivered in Singapore, still for Total and Pavilion, a slightly smaller with 12,000 cubic capacity, the LNG Brassavola. And uh, you can see here what's inside these vessels. So they are all equipped with our Mark III membrane technology, benefiting from the excellent track record at sea. And if you remember the Jacques Sade we see on the first picture, so this, this is a very wide tank, almost 52 meters, which equips all uh, our sister ships. 
And as I was saying, this, the, there are nine vessels of this series. They were all built in China and they are now successfully operating between Europe and Asia. Some of them already even bunkered by LNG. So we were talking about container vessel, but we are also challenging uh, the existing solutions. And uh, this is um, Le Commandant Charcot. It was built by Vard in Norway. Uh, she's currently sailing in, uh, in Antarctica. Um, we did uh, already a few webinars on this topic, but it's good to remind what really made the difference uh, on, this, uh, on this project is what you see on the left. You can see two technologies, the Type-C and Membrane, and the initial ship arrangement included two bilog tanks. Due to standard shape, they could hardly store 3,000 cubics on the, with the bilobs, and the Membrane tanks could store 4,500 cubic, so around plus 50%, and save hundreds of square meters of the deck, which is on top of that. And, uh, and this is also what uh, it looks from the inside. So that's the aft tank uh, when it's completed. You see that very specific tank slope, which is efficiently following the body lines. And also the, the very simple pieces of uh, equipment uh, inside the tank. OK, yeah. Um, so for this first cruise project, what is interesting also is the, the design pressure of the tanks has been increased to two bar gauge instead of 0.7 for additional flexibility. This is the solution we now propose for tanks of a few thousand cubics. And actually, um, there, there used to be or there are still be some, uh, some question about cross compatibility between LNG technologies. And what we see with these pictures is the successive bunkering from gasoom LNG trucks and LNG ships to the Ponant cruise vessel. All the bunkering operations went very well, um, and all keeping a low pressure, and sometimes even without the vaporator. And when, when we look at the figures on the right uh, table, it's a total less of 10 hours for almost a full bunkering. So it means that the ship was able to bunker full load of LNG uh, without any impact on the, on the commercial operations. We see here um, two other operations from type C vessels, type C bunkering vessels to container vessels that are equipped with membrane tanks. In this case, there are bigger tanks with the design pressure on the receiver side uh, at 0.7 bar gauge, and it still works. So um, if we take a wider look at our references and, uh, and other book, so we started in September of 2017 with CGM. Confirm the adopt adoption of LNG as fuel for these 23,000 TUs. The direction that CMS EGM confirmed with additional orders uh, of vessels in 2019 and early 21. But another great news came in 2021, our first order in Korea with CSPAN, Zim, and Samsung. And then many orders from, uh, from MSC and uh, Chacha. But what I want to stress here is what we see from mid 2021. Uh, is the LNG fuel market, which is getting more diversified with uh, different size of vessels, new owners, new yards. And we also see a change in the engine technology with owners willing to reduce emissions. And indeed, the, the high pressure two stroke engines means a lower meter sleep, but it also means a more complex boil of management. And the good news is that we are here to help on this topic, and especially Abdu will be here to help on this topic. So Abdu, that's your turn. Thank you, Alexander. Um, so uh, what follows will uh, briefly describe fundamentals of uh, boil of gas generation. And um, as uh, Alex already pinpointed, uh, what GTT does to improve specification and operation of uh, LNG fuel ships. Uh, but before getting a little bit more into the details, let's try to recall which functionalities are expected from the LNG fuel system. So from the LNG tank, it's expected to produce mechanical power to propel the vessel using pumps and vaporizers. Then electrical power needs to be generated for hotel load. Throughout the entire operations, the fuel tank will boil, then boil off has to be managed using consumers or in exceptional cases, boiler 
or vent mast. As you know, the tank has to be refilled at the bunkering port and uh, maintenance has to be carried out typically once every five years or according to maintenance plan. So among these functions, we're gonna focus on one key pillar, which is the boil of gas management functionality. Boil of gas management. Let's try to understand first what boil of gas is before trying to manage it. For instance, let's use a uh, analogy with a steam cooker. In a steam cooker, as you can see on the left side of the screen, heat accumulates over time inside the cooker, boils water, steam is generated, and at some point has to be exhausted to shrink cooker pressure. Same happens with a LNG fuel tank, as you can see on the right side of the, of the screen, where heat inlet from external conditions goes LNG to evaporate, generating boil of gas, which has to be sucked and treated by consumers to pressure down the tank and avoid venting. Let me try to be more clear. In other words, designers need to make sure that boil of gas is sucked and extracted from the tank prior to reaching a critical venting point to secure operations using equipment like compressors and boilers with the right size. To support the work of the designers, GTT has capitalized on the return of experience from various vessels lately exposed by my colleague Alexandre from which many design rules have been gathered into a document that we call LFS guide. This compiled document addresses not only the design rules to properly interface with membrane tank, but also several means to optimize operation of LNG fuel ships in general. For example, uh, in particular, you can see sections about compressors, which are addressed to make sure that then ca they can run in par parallel or pumps designed at the right flow rate to limit uh, unnecessary recirculation. So these guidelines are dedicated to support as early as possible the design and shared by GTT. In a more general scheme, in GTT, we have developed a tool where the tank and the fuel gas handling system design properties can be meticulously selected let me share with you typical questions which arise during this optimization process. On the containment system side, are we going for Mach 3 or Mach 3 flex with higher insulation thickness translating into better thermal performance? What is the optimal pressure with regards to the operating profile of the vessel? Is it 700 millibar G or one bar G? This process of optimization is also supported by holding time calculations. In fact, operations such as the maneuvering, idling, or cold ironing would require boil off to be kept inside fuel tank for a certain amount of time without venting. Therefore, containment system insulation performance and design pressure have to be validated under that holding time constraint using our in-house pressurized simulator. On the other front, a optimized fuel tank is nothing without a well put together fuel gas handling system. That's why we also check the relevance of various fuel gas handling system architectures. As you can see in this slide, designers can decide to go for low capex solutions, which is the one on the left side from which operating issues can arise or for upgraded solutions involving high pressure compressors, which is the one in the middle, which improve the flexibility of operation, but also the cost is increased, the maintenance would be a burden. Or somewhere in between, where solutions like uh, Recondenser have gained relevance, which is the one on the right side, by proposing a good capex opex balance, but also improvement of carbon, carbon footprint of the vessel. Now let's dig into recondenser version developed by GTT and partners that we call the recycle. So first, I hope I'm not gonna lose you by illustrating how the recycle works. Um, so from the LNG tank, bell of gas is sent to the auxiliary engines using compressor to generate electricity for her to load. Alternatively, 
steam inside the boiler. LNG is also sent to main engines using high pressure pump, high pressure vaporizer, and then main engines to propel the vessel. When auxiliary engines cannot consume all the boil of gas, what happens is that instead of burning the gas in the boiler or causing some risk of uh, pressurized venting, what we can do is send the excess gas to high pressure network where the cold LNG is recovered and used to reliquify boil of gas prior to reaching back tank. So such a recovery process, as you can see here, takes place into two locations. There is a pre-cooler and there is a recondenser in order to maximize the efficiency. You can also see um, temperature rising before the uh, vaporizer. And at the same time, boil of gas being cooled down prior to being ultimately reliquified inside the tank. The particularity of a GTT recondenser is that the pre-cooler and high pressure vaporizer are combined into one compact equipment to maximize cold power extraction. The fact that there is no buffer tank involved makes the system even more compact and easy to operate. So how the conclusion in this slide, Recycle is a integrated system recovering the cold towards the high pressure network. This cold would otherwise be wasted, so we use it as an opportunity to pressure down the tank. Uh, now let's have a look at a uh, container vessel, 7,000 TU, uh, through a case study with Recycle to illustrate impact of this uh, architecture in operation. So uh, what you see here on the horizontal axis is the vessel speed. On the vertical axis is the boil off consumption. You can see higher the speed, more boil off can be reliquified because we're taking more power from the tank. When combined with a typical hotel load consumption for this type of vessel, it's around two megawatts or 350 kilo per hour, up to 200% of the boil off design can be reliquified at 21 knots, or if you take 12 knots, 120% of the design DOR, which means that Recycle is able to offer more than enough reliquification power, even at low speed. What happens now if we put the graph into real life? Bear with me, I will try and explain to be more as clear as possible. Boil of gas is represented in light blue, has its own variation. Boil of gas varies in a fuel tank because the filling level varies, outside conditions varies as well. Recondensing capacity, as you just saw, varies with the vessel speed as well. So this is the area between the dotted line and the engine, auxiliary engine's gas consumption. Basically, this capacity. So what do we see? We see periods where Recycle is able to recondense all excess gas, which is the area in dark blue. We see periods where gensets are able to uh, cover all boil off, even requesting to supplement fuel using vaporizers. And we see periods where boil off gas is higher than the genset and the recycled loads combined. As you can see here, boil off is higher than the gensets and the recycled load. So what do we do with this excess gas? That's the typical question. If such period is short, then we pressurize the tank and use more recondensing capacity afterwards, as we can do it here. If such period are forcing to be long, then the key word is anticipation by using more recondensing power beforehand. As a conclusion, we are always able to handle the boil of gas.
let me try to have different perspective here and push the study a little bit further and see the potential benefits and for OPEX and emissions. So as a premise, I would say two stroke engines have a better efficiency and less methane slip than four stroke engines. That's why PTO or you can call it shaft generator is gaining momentum for electricity production. In our study, 2% of OPEX gain or fuel savings are achieved thanks to PTO only. When combined with the recycle, OPEX cut was pushed to 5%, translating into 5% of fuel gains, and dramatic cut on fuel emissions. So we believe recycle combined with PTO will be very beneficial. As a conclusion on this recycled part, or just trying to gather the various reasons why recycle should be used. Recycle is an integrated system translating into compact, highly efficient products. When we add that feature to the low capex, recycle can be the right fit for most LNV fuel ships. Uh, so far, several orders have been received by GCT and 10 LNG fuel ships will be equipped with recycled by mid 2024. We hope this number to improve over time whenever it makes sense. Now, let me hand it back over to Alexander for the conclusion and the next steps. Thank you, Abdul. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, at least I found it really clear. Thanks for the explanations. Um, so that's another wrap up uh, of this presentation. I think we, uh, we have seen that there is a strong return of experience that has been consolidated by GTT and we use it to better advise our peers and, and partners. Um, we have tools uh, available to define the key characteristics of the tank. We've been talking about different thickness, for example, and the fuel gas handling system. It is tremendous to stress that a good specification is essential for a good start in, uh, in the LNG journey for an efficient ship. And um, for the last part of this presentation, we see that as a passive and integrated system, the recycle, we condenser designed by GTT improves the flexibility and the OPEX. And as the last word before we go on the second part of this session. Uh, I think it's really, I mean, we are really happy to um, be able to say that by 2025, there will be more than 800 LNG fuel ships sailing or able to sail on LNG, which means uh, really um, momentum that we have seen uh, during the past uh, few years. So, now uh, we will uh, launch the poll, uh, which we will comment at the end of the, of the Q&A session. So I suggest you take a few uh, seconds to, to answer before we start the, the Q&A. So now you should be able to see the, the poll. We have to restart. Okay, I see this the first answers. Um, now, for the QA, I see we have a first question. Uh, so feel free to, to put as many questions as you want. And um, I will start with um, one question for you, Abdul, mm -hmm. uh, about the recycle, the condenser that you. I've presented. Um, my question is, what is the targeted market? Oh, oh very good question. Uh, thank you, Alexander. So recycle can be proposed whenever MEG engines are applied, as long as the uh, pressure management needs to be secured and the uh, vessel, vessel energy efficiency optimized. Um, in other words, uh, 
all LNG fuel segments are concerned. So we're talking about uh, container ships, PCTC, bulk carriers, VLCC, regardless of the containment system technology. So it could apply for a type C, but also type A or a type B. Uh, yeah, so the target, targeted market is uh, from very large. Thank you, Abdul. Um, a question from the audience, um, which is a little bit linked with uh, your first answer. Can the recycle be deployed on, on the LNG carriers? Basically, um, whenever we talk about LNG carriers with MEGI engines, uh, recycle could make sense. However, it's a matter of how much power I can extract from the, the stream to the main engines. In other words, um, recycle can be used to uh, uh, basically uh, recover the cold towards the main engines, but you have to know something. At the same time, we are putting um, slightly, would say, warmer LNG inside the tank. Then it's a matter of how long do I have available to get rid of that heat. So I would say it will be on a case-by-case -case approach. Maybe um, another way to ask the question is, uh, are we uh, developing um, similar systems in GTT uh, for, the, for the energy carriers using this, uh, this, this cold power? Yeah, so far it's uh, LNG fuel ship, ships and um, uh, the, um, for the LNG carriers, uh, we don't see uh, yet the, the, the market evolving, but uh, depending on the, the operation, operating profile of the ship, uh, we can check, but uh, our judgment is that recycled market is so far only for LNG fuel ships. Um, in, in other words, if you take a LNG carrier, the power to the main engines is around 25 megawatts. If we take a LNG fuel ships, it can range between 10 megawatts and let's say 65 megawatt for big uh, container ships. So LNG fuel ships has a, uh, have offer this, uh, I would say uh, uh, this basic flexibility where recycle can be, can be proposed because operating profile is very, uh, um, I would say, um, uh, yeah, you have flexibility where uh, um, the uh, uh, boil of gas can be can be managed using uh, using the cold. But the problem with the LNG carriers is that because we are slightly warming the the LNG uh, back to the tank, uh, it could be an issue. So that's why uh, it has to be a case by case approach depending on the operating uh, constraint of the uh, of the ship owner. Okay, thanks, Abdul. Um, still, we're talking about um, market. There's a question about the, um, a similar system uh, that could be implemented for the WinGD engines, the, the medium pressure two stroke engines. Oh, okay. So um, we, di we do not think uh, that the recycle is uh, relevant for uh, WinGD engines for the simple reason that when it comes to WinGD engines, the compressors, typically three-stage compressors, can be applied to control the boil-off and feed the engines. In other words, the reason, Alexander, you said it on your, on your initial speech, the reason why recycle makes sense is that high-pressure compressors, which are typically applied for MEGI engines, uh, do have capex and maintenance burden. That's why you have to find alternatives. So the alternative is low pressure compressors and recycle. But when it comes to the WinGD engines, the compressors are available. We don't anticipate any capex or maintenance issue. So we believe that recycle would not be competitive. Thank you. Okay, um, another question uh, still on, uh, uh, let's say to complete the overview about recycle is what would be the business model? Um, okay, so uh, business model, very good question. So GTT works with uh, well-known integrators to plug recycle 
inside the high pressure skid. So the integrator will deliver the skid uh, to yard. So the, the integrated skid will uh, incorporate the recycle, but also high pressure pump and high pressure vaporizer. And GTT will support that task. In parallel, GTT will support operation of recycle. So the yard will interface with the integrator and GTT will work with the integrator to plug the recycle inside the high pressure skip. Okay, thank you. I encourage you to of um, yeah bringing additional questions on uh, on boil off management. I think we we've been talking about recycle quite a lot. I would have. Uh, additional question for you, Abdul, regarding the, we've talked about the, the high pressure compressors. Maybe you can uh, give a few additional words on, on this uh, other solution. Okay, high pressure compressors. Okay, uh, so we think high pressure compressors could, could be relevant as long as the maintenance is secured and the capex is not a big burden. So um, what I can say from what we see, uh, high pressure sections of the compressor could suffer from some wear and tear, which could require additional uh, spare parts or additional redundancy, uh, substantially increasing the price of the gas system. Um, I can also add that the operating cost can also can be very high. So for those who might be inclined to, to check the uh, high, pressure, high pressure compressors, we uh, strongly advise to also check uh, low pressure compressor and recycle configuration uh, purely based on capex and and mantex uh, uh, items, I would say. So, waiting for a few additional questions from the audience, but maybe or probably Abdul was very clear about the bylaw of management in the fuel gas system. And um, in the meantime, we could look at uh, the results of the, of the poll. So we have four questions. Um, the first question was, which engine type do you think will have the biggest market share in the future uh, for the energy fuel ship uh, production system? And we see, uh, okay, uh, First, the first answer with 67% is the two-stroke MEGI. That's also what we've seen in the, in the recent orders, uh, probably lead to the reduction of um, and willingness to reduce the ease and sleep. Uh, but still, we see um, more than a quarter of the answer for the WGD engines. We know that WGD has been improving um, um, the engines with regards to, to miss and sleep. And we have also, that's what we mentioned today, uh, easier ball of management with the low or medium pressure engines. And we see uh, far from the others, the, the four stroke uh, propulsion, which is uh, also probably less adapted to uh, all the big uh, container vessels or tankers that are switching to LGS. The second question we are is how easy do you think PTO, power takeout, or also called the shaft generator, um, how easy its application will be in the future? And uh, we see, okay, with 57%, uh, the first answer is very easy application due to appetite for energy efficiency. Um, but still uh, a few um, answers or not easy because of the capex or not easy uh, due to operation. And the thing is, we, we understand PTU today is, is gaining momentum. It's, it's still uh, not applied on, on many projects, but uh, we realize and we are not uh, alone that it could make really, really could make sense uh, with a reduction of the genset consumption and a reduction of the, the, um, the emissions of the maintenance slip, which is uh, which is bounded. The third question is, well, who do you think mostly decides on the fuel gas system design? 
And um, there is a clear common answer, which is chip holders and charters with almost 70% of the answers. And, and then a, a little bit of uh, yards or a fuel gas system provider. So uh, yes, it's true that the ship owner uh, or the charter, mainly the ship owner and the future operator will, uh, will decide uh, on uh, the efficiency of its system. And uh, we believe it is important, especially because it's still uh, a new market um, that the operator is, is well advised uh, because the choice that is making during the construction or during the specification will have high impact on the, on the efficiency of the vessel. And um, the, the last question of the poll was, uh, so when it comes to boil off management system in connection with the MEGI engines, the high pressure two stroke engines, which of the following uh, solution would be the more comfortable for the audience? And uh, there were some choice between low pressure compressors only, low pressure compressor plus the condenser, high pressure compressors or subcooler. And we see a clear advantage for the low pressure compressors plus the recondenser system, which is a good news. I mean, um, we, uh, this is also, um, the solution that uh, we see uh, coming uh, thanks to its low capex uh, and the fact that it is passive. So um, we have little risk of uh, failure. And uh, it's simply, uh, it's, it's quite intelligent because it's using, as Abdu uh, explained, it's, it's using the code that would have been wasted otherwise. So, um, I close the poll now, but I see that uh, the audience has brought a few additional questions. Um, so Abdu, get ready. Yes, sir. Uh, the, yes, um, a question about, uh, still about the recondenser. Mm -hmm. It's, it is very similar with the FSIU recondenser theory. So the question is, probably about the recycle in particular, but uh, also the, the recondenser for, uh, for LNG fuel ships. Is the patent equipment or uh, simply uh, um, mm -hmm. applied to the system? Yeah, so it's um, a patented concept and architecture by GTT. Um, and there is a difference between uh, this recondenser and the recondenser in FSRUs. Uh, in the freaking dancer, there is uh, no uh, buffer. Um, um, the uh, reliquified, the recondensed liquid is, uh, is directly uh, put back to the tank. And it's uh, an integrated system, uh, which maximizes the, uh, the efficiency, as I said earlier. So uh, if you check again the, uh, the recondenser in the FSRU, they are pretty much different from this one has more equipment are uh, implemented uh, in the in FSRUs. Here it's a very simple, compact, uh, highly efficient, uh, low capex, uh, and LNG is uh, directly poured back to the tank, which is not the case for, for FSRUs. So yeah, so patent from GTT, different from uh, what exists in FSRUs. And uh, I got the last question, um, maybe a little bit uh, complex. So um, which impact do you see? Um, so it's less, less than to the recognize, so maybe more generally for oil of management. Which impact do you see on the passage planning or the weather routing uh, of uh, LNG fuel ships? Well, I think, um, as we said earlier, we can answer um, has a presently constructed is a powerful tool to uh, recover the boil off for most cases. So we don't foresee any, uh, let's say a road change um, based on the fact that uh, the boil off gas would be much more and the recondenser would not be able to handle the excess gas. A matter of fact, to be more clear, uh, in our perspective, we believe that when a recondenser is uh, implemented, 
mostly um, all excess boil of gas cases can be handled either by a direct use of the recondenser or by anticipation. In other words, we can use more recondensing power prior to the uh, excess boil of gas generation to anticipate and then be, uh, be able to handle uh, the excess gas, which will come uh, later. So uh, I hope I answered to this question. I'm not a specialist of for weather routing. I think uh, we will also ask to our digital team what they think about uh, this question. But uh, in my area, what I could say is that we don't foresee any weather rerouting based on the fact that uh, Recondenser is able to handle most excess gas, which would be generated in the, in the, during the operational profile of the, of the LNG free ships. Thank you very much, Abdul. I think if there is no other question from the audience, um, I would like to thank you all for this, um, for these questions and for your attendance. And uh, I have a last word before we close the session. Oh, I have, I have a last question, just, uh, just on time. Very good. Um, so what, what would be the, the, the limitation of uh, recycling the bowl of gas if, uh, if we factor the excess heat which is introduced into the tank? So I guess it's linked with the, the, the little, uh, the, the detail that you give regarding the additional, the heated LNG. Coming back to the tank. Yeah, so um, the, um, the only limitation of the, I uh, uh, would say, uh, um, the boil of gas that we can uh, recycle is the cold power available. That's the, that's the first point. Uh, basically, as you understood, the more the engine is running, the more cold power is at stake. So the more we can uh, recover from that cold power. So uh, we can roughly estimate how much can be reliquified, but, but uh, obviously we have to deduct the heat that would be generated uh, in the lines, uh, maybe, uh, maybe inside, the, I would say inside the tank, so on and so forth. So we don't have, I mean, uh, in short, uh, depending on, the, on what you have has cold available to the, uh, to the main engines, uh, we can uh, directly correlate uh, the maximum boil of gas, which can be uh, reliquified. Uh, but uh, any time the engines run, uh, we are reliquifying um, the. We are able to reliquify the, uh, the the boil of gas. I see um, additional detail on this question, and I understand that would be uh, linked to more to energy carriers because. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I yeah. think that. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, this one. so um, the, the comment is that terminals, LNG terminals, they have a limitation on the arrival for, uh, for saturated vapor pressure of the cargo, meaning, yeah. meaning the temperature of the, of the LNG cargo. That's true. That's completely true. That's why the product is uh, primarily uh, dedicated to LNG fuel ships. Um, our experts are also uh, saying that uh, uh, we are heating, but not that much or even at some point we are cooling down because uh, what's going on when we uh, put back the LNG in the tank is that uh, it will flush and uh, what's remaining will, will, be, uh, will be cold enough and will not hit. The problem would be the flush. Then we have to deal with uh, the vapor which will be generated. So we think that uh, uh, the, uh, the temperature constraint can be uh, easily removed uh, by having a, uh, let's say, uh, uh, proper um, gas management, we can say we can run one engine. So we can flush the, uh, the reliquified liquid, which is going back to the tank. By flushing it, we are getting running any cold, and then, but we were generating more boil of gas. And that boil of gas can be treated by one auxiliary engine. So, uh, so far, the product is dedicated to LNG fuel ships. Uh, for LNG carriers, we can apply it, but we have to be very careful. Uh, and I will, uh, yeah, we will uh, we will check with our innovation department, um, which uh, additional market could be uh, targeted uh, based.
based on the fact that LNG carriers could be interested, but so far it's only LNG fuel ships. Thanks for the comprehensive answer. So um, that will uh, close our session. I just like to put in the video again, uh, go to uh, one last slide and one last word. If you manage to do so, you can like to talk. Say it again. If you can go to the to the last next uh, slide. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No worries. Um, it's just to say that um, if you enjoy the webinar um, and you'd like to learn more about the solutions, you can register to. To the next webinars, in particular the one we do uh, on the 8th and the 10th of November. And this time um, we will host an, another kind of uh, topic, which is shear water, ballast water free LNG feeder or bunker vessels. And um, the thing is that we, um, we have designed, we've tested and validated a new and innovative ship concept. For, uh, for safe navigation, but without the use of any ballast water. So the, the webinar will give you an introduction, uh, present the design the solutions, and, and show also the, the extensive test program that uh, uh, we have performed and, and the key results. Uh, and Bureau Veritas will also be there as a classification society, so that we share their perspective. And the uh, HSVA, so the Hamburg Ship Model Basin, will uh, will give um, further insights on the on the best uh, company. You can register, and we hope to see uh, you uh, at the next uh, at the next webinar. So thanks again to uh, to the audience, and thanks a lot, Abdul, for your uh, your good explanations. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Alex. Bye. Bye. Bye.